Welcome back to You in a Garage, everybody. We have got a treat in the shop here today. We are working on this 79 Corvette, and we're going to be giving this thing some major upgrades. Uh, you can see here we've got some headers. We're going to be doing a whole new exhaust system. We're installing this Fitech uh, EFI system. And if you look behind me over here, we've got this giant pile of boxes full of lots of other goodies to get this thing fixed up. So we're about ready to have a ton of fun. The first thing we're going to do is get the car up on the lift so that we can drop the tank and install this new sending unit with an electric fuel pump on it. Uh, this is supposed to be plug and play. We'll find out when we get there. But we need this electric fuel pump so we can supply enough fuel pressure to run our new Fitech EFI. Once we got the vet up on the lift, the first step was to remove the spare tire carrier since it sits directly under the fuel tank. All right, uh, we've got the spare tire holder removed. You can see we've got the gas tank here. Just about ready to pull it, but before we do that, I'm gonna drain as much gas out of the tank as possible. So up here, I've got a hose connected to the output of the gas line here by the fuel pump. And we're just draining it down here into our gas can. So. As soon as that empties out, we'll see about getting that gas tank pulled. While the fuel was draining out of the tank, we pulled the exhaust. It was in the way of us removing the tank, so it had to come out. But this isn't really an added step for us, since we plan on replacing all of it with a better system anyway. Anybody that's ever worked on a vehicle for the first time knows that you never know what you're going to find. Um, this is for hooking uh, up trailer lights on a Corvette. And I don't know who the heck thought they were going to be towing anything with a uh, Corvette, but they hooked up trailer lights. There's no hitch, so I don't know what that was what was going on there. And you look right up in here. Yeah, they didn't do it well. So we're going to be pulling all that out. I used a transmission jack to support the tank while I unbolted the cross member that holds the front of the tank. I had loosened the tank straps earlier, so with the cross member out of the way, the tank came down easily. Luckily, all the tubes on the top of the tank are connected in a way that lets them drop down with the tank, so disconnecting them went much more smoothly than I expected. Some of the hoses were stuck on pretty good, so it was nice that we had good access. With the tank on the bench, we got to work removing the old sending unit. Some of these hoses are in pretty bad shape, so we'll be replacing all of them with new fuel injection rated hoses. The new sending unit and fuel pump we got is a direct replacement for the stock unit, so it fit right in without any modification. All 
All right, we just got our new sending unit installed and uh, I just noticed an issue. Um, this is the old sending unit and you can see it's got a vent line here, the uh, output line here and a return line. On the new one we have, we've got the vent line and the output, there's no return. So this pump doesn't need a return line. Bring the uh, Phytech system over here. You can see that it's got a, an input and a return line on the system. I did a little research and it looks like we can cap off the return line and just run the system return list. So hopefully that works out because that's what we got. With the sending unit reinstalled in the tank, we reinstalled the tank back in the vet. Went to install the uh, tank straps in the Corvette here, and I couldn't get any of these bolts to thread on, or any of these nuts to thread on. I've got all these nuts from you know taking it apart, and only these ones would thread on there. They're very close to three eighths, but evidently those are metric. Didn't expect that. Metric bolt issues aside, the reinstall went smoothly, and we had the whole thing reinstalled in about 20 minutes. All right, tank is all reinstalled. Now all we need to do is install the spare tire carrier, and then we can finish off the wiring. All right, the wiring for the fuel pump um, it just has a couple of grounds and the only extra wire we need to run is the power for the fuel pump itself. Now we're going to run that, extend that with this red wire here. And what we're going to do is we're running it right through that bulkhead connector right there. Now, hopefully you can see this. I've taped the wire to a piece of coat hanger and I've run that in next to the antenna wire. And hopefully we can use that as a fish line and just pull it through. And then we can put the bulkhead connector back in. All right, this is where the bulkhead connector is on the inside. Now, I'm not going to be able to have the camera up in there while I do this. So let me try and pull that and uh, see how it works. All right, we got her. Took a couple of tries, but we are through. Now we just need to put that bulkhead fitting back in and move on. Next up, we removed the old mechanical fuel pump, but getting at it wasn't easy. We had to remove the air conditioning compressor in order to get access to where it lives on the side of the block. Luckily, we didn't have to disconnect any of the lines. We were just able to move the compressor to the side without discharging the system. We spent some time removing the old mechanical fuel pump because we're not going to need it with the in-tank electric fuel pump we just got through installing. Now, the reason why we've done that is because Fuel injection systems need 65 PSI to operate, some higher than that, but that's about the average. Um, the old carburetor that was on this only needed 5 PSI, and the mechanical fuel pump attached to the side of the engine was just fine for that. Well, it's not going to work for the fuel injection, so we've got to replace it. Now, with the fuel pump uh, taken off the side of the block, well, now we need to install the block off plate. This will uh, seal it up so we don't have oil leaking all over the place. Um, these are common. You can get them at pretty much any uh, auto parts store because this is a very common mod. You can see where the fuel pump was installed, right down there. And you need to block that hole off with the block off. Now that we've got the old mechanical fuel pump removed and the block off plate installed, we're going to take this opportunity to do one more upgrade that isn't strictly necessary to install fuel injection, but it's going to give us a nice little boost. Check it out. We're going to be removing these old restrictive exhaust manifolds that were on here before and replace them with these nice, clean, 
free-flowing headers. Now, like I said, this isn't exactly necessary in order to install the fuel injection system, but we're gonna have to install an O2 sensor into the exhaust system anyway. So while we're at it, we figured it'd be a nice time to do some upgrades. For a second there, I thought we were going to have a problem with uh, the headers fitting down here around the frame. As you can see, it actually fits pretty good. I just needed to get it into the right position. Sometimes you have to worry about headers not fitting as well as they should. Uh, we do have a slight complication here. The air conditioning bracket uh, bolted right, right into this bolt on the exhaust manifold. But the exhaust manifold was about an inch and a half thick, and you can see the flange on the header is only 516. So this is the bolt that went in there, and obviously that's not gonna tighten down like it's supposed to. So what we had to do is make ourselves a little spacer. You can see right here, put that on, put the spacer on, and then everything is gonna work the way it should. Not a big deal, but just something to be aware of. Now that we've run the fuel pump wiring up into the cabin, that part's done, and it's time to get everything in the engine bay taken care of. So let's get this carburetor off, get this installed and get moving. Now we just gotta get the vacuum hoses off and make sure we know where these all go so we can place them. This vacuum line right here is in the way. Took a look at the problem with this not fitting on here with what was happening is this piece right here, right here, was hitting this vacuum line, but just barely. So what we've decided to do is we're gonna add this spacer under underneath the throttle body. This will space everything up a little bit. Um, It'll help keep the throttle body a little bit cooler, so that's a bonus anyway, and that'll make it so we clear this guy. It's gonna put on, put on. We've got the spacer installed, and that is clearing everything nicely down there. It's hard to tell because there's a lot of vacuum lines. Uh, speaking of which, we got all the vacuum lines hooked up. We got uh, the throttle linkage all hooked up, and we've got the fuel line hooked up. Now. What I'm gonna move on to next is this connection right here. So this is a temperature gauge for the Phytech system. And um, where I need to put that is right here. Well, there's no port for that. So I'm gonna swap that out for this guy right here. And then I'll be able to put my temperature gauge in there and get that hooked up.
right, now the throttle body is all installed. It's, uh, it was time to do the wiring. I got all that done. It actually went pretty quick. The back of the book actually has some wiring diagrams for some of the, ver the common configurations. And this is the one that we use. Since we have an HEI distributor, uh, we don't have any electric fans, but otherwise this is pretty close to what we have. So it, it appears that there's a whole bunch of wires coming out of this, but it actually ends up going together pretty well. Um, right up here, this is where we mounted the fuse block. We ran the power connection down to the post on the starter because that's the only direct power source we had up here in the front on this Corvette. Then we have three wires that go into the cab. We got the ignition wire here in white, so it, that turns on the system. We have this orange wire that goes back to our fuel pump. And there's our red wire that runs over to the battery. Um, and then we have this here that runs from the throttle body into the cab and into the computer that runs the whole system. Other than that, we have a wire right in here. This blue wire right here is tied into our tack so that the Phytech system knows when the engine's running. Around here on the front, we have our temperature sender. That's pretty much it. Anyway, let's fire this up, see if we got it all hooked up right. We've got the fuel injection all installed. Let's start this bad boy up. All right, we've obviously started the Phytech system. She runs, but she's not quite done being installed. We have one last thing we gotta do, and that's install our O2 sensor. I wanted to take a second to show you why we're replacing the exhaust. This is the piece that came off of, directly off the stock manifold. And as you can see, it's pretty narrow here, and it also necks down really bad right here in the bend. Also, it's got some pretty crappy welds on it. Don't know what's going on with all that. Anyway, pretty crappy exhaust. So we're going to be replacing all of this tube with this. Look at the size difference there. That's going to breathe way easier. And all of our bends are mandrel bent. Look at that. No neck down at all. It's going to be quite the improvement. I'm trying to get the exhaust set up here. And on this Corvette, the exhaust, I'm going to show you the passenger side. The exhaust goes right through this cross member. And I want to space that, the exhaust in the center of that. So I created a couple of these wooden spacers. And that'll hold the exhaust while I get it put together. I think it turned out pretty slick. Didn't film a whole lot of this, but you can see I've got the driver's side mocked up, up through the cross member. And that's gonna give us enough to weld on the bung, the O2 sensor. It's coming together. Once we had the driver's side tube welded up, we got it bolted into place. Then we got to work fitting up the passenger side. That is the passenger side all tacked in place. 
Now we just got to pull this out and finish up the welding. Got the passenger tube all welded up here. So let's get it reinstalled so we can uh, test this thing. Now I haven't finished the back half of the exhaust just yet. Um, we'll be getting to that shortly, but I've got a couple other projects in the shop that need, uh, need some attention. So we're gonna stop here, but we need to get this to have enough of, exhaust, of an exhaust system so that the O2 sensor will work the way it's supposed to. And we can uh, spend a little time getting the EFI system tuned and see how this thing does. All right, the headers and all the way back to the transmission cross member, the exhaust is done. Obviously that isn't complete. We'll be running it back there and installing some uh, mufflers next time. The Fitech EFI system had barely any time to tune itself, but already the vet seems to be running better. We can't wait to get the exhaust system finished off so that we can get this baby back on the road and really see what she can do. There's a lot more to come for this vet, so please subscribe so you don't miss anything. We hope you enjoy the channel, and thanks for watching You in a Garage.